amazing to me what what is absolutely amaz amazing to me is how after all this time and, and not just pastoring but as a believer how God's timing is incomparable when when it is amazing when what happens in our lives when we actually surrender to God's timing in our lives. So often we're fighting against the moment, fighting against the flow of life. But when you actually surrender to how God is moving with no desire to control anything, with no desire to dictate anything, but to just collapse into the flow of God's movement, moment, and timing. There's nothing more profound. And watch this. There's nothing more courageous that you can do than to simply and beautifully and profoundly trust God. There was nothing better. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Um, I want to reiterate a few things, a few announcements. One, that um, we are doing baptism and baby dedications. We have been doing them for some time now. But the, for those of you who want to be baptized, who feel the compulsion, uh, you can go on to the website. It is much easier. We've changed some things on the website to make it um, easier to navigate so if you have a baby you want to do dedication or you want to be baptized uh, you can do that easily on the website and simply go to fcbcnyc.org and do so I want to remind you that our annual uh, community Thanksgiving harvest feast will be held on Thanksgiving here <laughs> from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. All are welcome to come and receive free Thanksgiving meals. We can't do it how we've done it in the past, but it doesn't mean it can't get done. And so we want you to come, and those who may know on Thanksgiving, you may know somebody who needs a meal, who needs to share in the moment, they can do so. Um, and if you are an administrator in temporary housing facility and want to receive meals, contact Sharon Joseph Spence at S Spence, S S P E N C E at FCBCNYC.org, especially if you want us to get meals to that facility. We are we've always sought to be a blessing on Thanksgiving Day to those who may be unable to fellowship with others or may be unable to have a meal. We want to make sure we offer that. Also, we're gonna be doing some different things in 2022. We have spent, I think all of us in some way, have spent the last 20 months or so reacting to a pandemic. And now we want to be intentional and proactive in terms of how we show up as FCBC. And to that end, in 2022, we are truly looking to increase how we engage, how we train, how we shape those of you who seek to be volunteers. And so there will be numerous volunteer opportunities in 2022. And so um, we're asking volunteers who may be interested in participating to sign up online again at fcbcnyc.org and click on the volunteer tab in the menu selection. There are all sorts of uh, areas, some that are obvious and some that will be coming up. Merchandise team, media and production team, Sunday love, those are people you see, ushers, security, uh, everybody who's been working, our communications team, media internships, you call it. We have all sorts of things in addition to volunteering for our activities and our yearly events. But we want to do an amazing and intentional job of really preparing and equipping those of you who are encouraged. We have so many people who want to volunteer. We want to make sure that you take advantage of that moment. And there's more than one way to serve at FCBC. We know you can worship. We want to know, can you serve? 
and so we'll be doing that in 2022. Listen, before we begin and move into our identity statement, I wanted to share some. So stand on your feet as we prepare to declare those words. Now, you know, people who know me know that I am a big sports fan. I'm a sports junkie, I guess. I just happen to be also a glutton for punishment because of my particular teams. I am a diehard fan of the New York teams that don't seem to win. Y'all not really praying for me, I can tell that. Y'all not praying for me. I'm a New York Mets fan. I'm a, we 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 ain't won a championship since 1986. I was 15. I'm a New York Jets fan. Last time we won a championship, I was just an idea in God's mind. I'm a New York Knicks fan. I was wearing pull-ups when they last won a championship. But I don't let go. Y'all got to pray for me, I said. But I'm a New York Knicks fan. I got to say that part again. Because I know it's early in the season. You know, but if you're a diehard Knicks fan, you know, we, we, we acting like we won the championship right now. <laughs> but I want to share something with you. That's where I really want to get to about the Knicks. The other night, you know, if you're a Knicks fan, was a testing game, right? Friday night, we played the defending champs and uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, and we were down by like 21. My son is a Knicks fan, too. I think I passed that on to him. And so we talked about this, and he, he said he turned off the TV. I was about to take his Knicks card right there because we don't turn it off until the game is over, okay? And, and so you saw the game, the Knicks came back, won the game, led by Derrick Rose, dropped 23 points. But here's what I want to share with you. After the game, you know, in the interview, the press presser, they were asking Derrick Rose, you know, or saying to him, this seemed like vintage Derrick Rose. And before he could answer, Julius Randle was stepping in and said, no, this is not vintage Derrick Rose. He said, you know, yes, that Derrick Rose won the MVP. He says, this is an evolved Derrick Rose. <laughs> he said, he said, because here's as he said that, because you know, when you're the MVP, that's an individual achievement. But, but when he said the Derrick Rose now is new and improved, because he makes everybody better. You see, there are people in our culture right now who will celebrate you for the individual accomplishments that you have. But when you have transcended ego-driven activity and then realize that the greatest accomplishment is that when you show up, you make everybody else better? No, you might not get MVP awards. You just might win a championship when you can do that. So, so in the spirit of the evolving Derrick Rose, come on, let's declare our identity statement together, beloved. We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers, and doers. Come on. Called to live, commanded to love, and commissioned to serve. And here at FCBC, you know how we say it. We live, we love, we serve. Amen. Listen, you'll understand what I meant about the energy and the, the move of God and the Spirit. I was actually going to ask you all to sing that song after the sermon. Um, and and you, you'll see why. I, I want to turn this morning... And I didn't even tell the media team. Man, my bad, y'all. So let me, get, let me give them a chance to get it. Isaiah 43. And I'm reading this in the NRSV and the message. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. All right? In the NRSV, then the message. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. I'm going to say it one more time and give them a chance to get it together. My bad, y'all. I always tell them what the scripture is. I was caught up in the spirit. Isaiah, let me know when y'all, I can't see nobody up there, but Isaiah 43, 
in the NRSV 1 through 3. They got it? Oh, they got, I don't see it on the screen. I need to see. No, I'm joking. Isaiah 43. There we go. Is that Isaiah 43? Oh, yeah, that's it. All right, let me read this. I'm going to read 1 through 3, part of 3. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And I'll stop there. In the Message Bible, here's how it reads. Oh, let me get it right now. That's the thing with technology. Here we go, Message Bible. But now, God's message, the God who made you in the first place. Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name, your mind. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end because I am you are your personal. I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. Amen. Come on, let's, let's pray. God, we are so grateful today. We're so thankful that you continue to do the unbelievable, and that is to be mindful of us. And God, we know we don't always give you good material to work with. We sometimes get in our own way. We sometimes sabotage our best plans. But God, you're mindful of us. You're mindful. And that's reason enough to rejoice. We learned last week, oh God, that we ought to wake up with an agenda for rejoicing. So God, we woke up ready to celebrate today. We woke up ready to give your name the glory and the honor. And the truth is, oh God, it shouldn't just be Sunday. Every day we get up. We ought to bless your name because you are more than worthy. And the, the powerful thing we need to know, God, is that we are worthy. We are worthy because you made us. Now, God, allow your word to hit the intended targets today. Let it move. Let it pierce. Let it confuse some. Let it conflict others. But then let it liberate some. Let it loose some of us, oh God, from the chains that have us bound spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Do your work like only you can, oh God. We will continue to, to lift your name up, give you glory, and honor you. We love you. We love you, God. And it's in your name we pray. And we say, Amen. Remain standing. Again, let me read that in the Message Bible. But now, God's message. The God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel. Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. For God called your name, your mind. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you are between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. Amen. Do me a favor. Turn to your name and say, neighbor, neighbor, God knows your name. Come on, turn to the other neighbor and tell them the same thing. Neighbor, God knows your name. Now put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today. God knows your name. We done sang the sermon already. God knows your name. 
These are verses for the victorious, words for warriors, a, a, a poetry for those who've come into their power. These words ignite and set on course, revive and galvanize, rejuvenate and restore. These are words that, that those of us who are believers and have been on this journey, we arrive at after going through. For when we go through and come out, these words then make even more sense because they don't become words that shaped us as we entered life's journey. These are words we discovered while on the journey. Don't be afraid, God said. Why, God? There's so much in the world that is worthy of evoking fear from us. When we look around our world, our country, our communities, there are more than enough things that would cause us to be fearful. Fearful of facing new days when violence is rampant and pervasive. Fearful of even fellowship when uh, the pandemic still is ravaging so many places and spaces and death is still a reality in the midst of this pandemic. So many reasons to be fearful. But there's nothing to me more fear generating than the fear of making mistakes. I hope you hear that today. That fear of making mistakes is the kind of fear that will cause you never to try anything. The fear of falling short is the fear that will stunt you in your growth, that will halt you in your footsteps, and at the end of the day, undermine every aspiration you could ever have simply because you're afraid of failing. How many of you in here understand what I mean this morning? I know there are more than a few of us in here this morning who can testify that there have been more than a few occasions when you have been crippled by the fear of your mistakes or making them fearful of failure. And because of that, you have made choices that you thought guaranteed safe passage in this journey. You have made decisions that have been architected and created by your comfort zones. You have made decisions that have kept you at a minimum so you don't move into the maximum of life because you are afraid of falling, afraid of failing, but maybe more than that, afraid that you couldn't get back up after you fall. That's the fear that the psalmist, or rather the writer of Isaiah, is speaking about right now. Because when God says in that 43, don't be afraid, period. Why, God? Here's the answer. Because I have redeemed you. Oh, see, you, you, you may not fully understand why that's worthy right there of just shouting. You see, redeemed and being redeemed means that God, here's the definition, go look it up, compensates for your flaws and faults. Man, that didn't hit you the right way. That God compensates. The gaps that your flaws created, God fills in. Oh, man, I hope you hear that. Because we like the redeeming language in church, but I want to use something different, Alicia. I, I want to say God has compensated for me. That God has filled in those spaces that have been created by my missteps and my mistakes. That's the great fear, the fear of failure. And God says, no, don't worry, I've redeemed you. That you are among the realm of the redeemed. And being redeemed means that your flaws, your faults, your failures are not definitive in your life. Oh, my God, if redemption wasn't possible and plausible, you would be justified in your fear. But because God can fill in the spaces created by your mistakes and your flaws. That's why the writer writes, God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to take the chance. Don't be afraid to fall down. The writer Proverbs said it this way, the righteous person falls seven times 
and gets back up. Gets back up. So why would you be afraid of being defined by your failures? You can only be defined by your failures if you never get up again. And even when you feel like you cannot get up, that's when God what? Redeems. Well, you got to let this sink in. Redeems. Why do you do that, God? I'm going to be short this morning. God, why do you redeem us? It's there in the text. You say it. God says, I know your name. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, that your redemption is connected to your knowledge of who we are. You see, so hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. When I was born, and when all of you were born, I, I mean, I was there, but I wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, I was there, but I wasn't there. They gave me a name, Michael. But that wasn't a name for me. That was a name for my parents. That was for them to identify me. Because I had not yet developed the capacity to identify myself. So the name they gave me was to help them, not me. Oh, you missing this today. That, that, that became the name that other people could identify me by. So I went to school and they took attendance and they called Michael Orr and said, here I am. But here I am really didn't show up yet. Oh, y'all missing that. I, I should have said, that's what they call me. But it's not who I am. Because who I am is bigger than what they call me. <laughs> Watch this. And God hit me with this. God said, I redeem you because what? I know your name. Now, you may be saying, well, what's my name then? Because what you are is connected to how you show up in some ways. But we read this, Alicia, we read it wrong. We read this verse wrong. When God says, I know your name, period, you are, not Michael, he said, you are, name coming, mine. Y'all missed that part. That, 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 the name, see, that's it, that God tags on us is mine. Wait, that means the name that God gives is not the identity, it's the belonging. Oh, God. I belong to God. So that the identity I forge after the realization of who I am. It's connected to who I belong to. That is God. So I love Michael Anthony Walren Jr., but it doesn't speak to the essence of my belonging. Because when I let myself catch up with my belonging, my name means nothing. Oh. Because how I show up, is a revelation of my divine connection. And you only get to know me as I show up in my divinity. Oh, God, y'all. Maybe this is too much this morning. And, and, and here you are talking about my name is mine. But when you say it, you're speaking from divinity. Oh, you didn't get that. God calls you mine. And here you getting all bent out of shape because somebody called you a wrong name. It don't matter. Names are identifiers for other people so they don't have to go through the arduous task of getting to the heart of who you are. N names are simply signifiers for what people hope you might be. It's a way for people to somehow get connected to you when, without having to do the work of knowing you. I mean, pause for a second. That would assume you've actually done the difficult work of getting to know yourself in the first place, of getting to see who you are in the first place, because most of us are still languishing in the land of names, but not in the name of la land of identity. You're going to get this. 
So the question becomes, who are you? And who are you has nothing to do with the name given to you. Again, the name given to you is to make it convenient so you're just not this thing running around the house. Isn't it amazing how your parents use your full name when you mess up? When they use the full government, something is wrong. But who are you then? If not what other people say you are. Have you actually done the exploratory work connected to finding out who you are? Have you gone beyond the things that have happened to you? Because oftentimes we start naming ourselves based on what's happened to us. And the worst name you could ever give yourself that many of us live into is victim. You might not say victim is your name, but you got to always be the victim in every circumstance. You love playing the victim, being the victim, acting like the victimized. Because, 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 because somehow you've accepted that your role is to be the victim, which means you're the person that things happen to and you have no agency of your own. Can you imagine what your life looked like when you simply walk around waiting for things to happen to you? And then you try to get fancy with it and philosophical. Well, that's fate. That's just how things are supposed to be. But then you have all this investment from God in you. And you have the, the gumption to walk around and wait for stuff to happen. You act like you have no power, no say, no sense of subjectivity. And you settle for how people see you. Walking around every day with your eyes closed even though they're open. Not seeing anything for yourself because everything you see, you've been told what it looks like. So you've never opened your eyes to see what the world really looks like because the world has been given to you and they have given names to everything. And you've accepted the names given so you never discover anything on your own. In fact, you're not even cultivating our culture to go on journeys of discovery because we assume that everything is already known. And so if you think that everything is already known, you then move from the known to the known to the known, and then you hope to grab hold of certainty. And somehow you then confuse certainty with faith and think that faith and certainty are the same thing. No, most of us have never walked in faith. We operate on certainty. I got to know it. I got to understand it. I got to get it. I got to get it. See, faith doesn't require any certainty. Faith means I walk. Where are you walking? I'm not sure, but I know my feet are moving. And along the way, you don't wait for stuff to happen. You start making things happen. But you can't do any of that when you don't know who you are. God says, I know you. Let me back up again. There are people who think they know you because they know the identifier, the symbol that has been put upon you. But God says, no, I know you. And there are people who know you who do not know you the way God knows you. Because God's knowing you comes with benefits. I'm grateful that everybody here knows my name. I thank you. But to be known by God. So let that just watch over you for a second. You busy on the internet trying to be known and don't realize you're already known. In the eyes of the one who created sun, moon, and stars, you're already a celebrity. And you don't even know it. Chasing the approval of wannabes. When the architect of the universe says, I know you. Who else you need to know you when God knows you? Who else you need to understand you when God understands you? And the people who you're looking for affirmation from and validation from have no benefits to their knowledge of you. Come on, God, what are the benefits? Well, when you walk through the waters... They will not overtake you. When you find yourself in flooding moments, they will not overwhelm you. 
when you are going through the fire, it will not consume you. Those are the benefits of being known by God. It means that what is experienced does not become definitive. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's too much. What is, ex write that down, somebody. Tweet that, okay? Wait, wait. What is experienced by me does not have to become definitive for me. Little rough patch right now? Experience it, but don't live there. Little hardship right now? Experience it. But don't build a house in your hardship. <laughs> Things are not working out the way you thought they should right now? Stop acting like time stopped in your problem. One of the greatest words, words in the scripture is shall. It ain't right now, but it shall be. And the question is, can your body catch up with your shall? Or are you going to live in your what is? Oh, gosh. God said, I will be the greatest benefactor in your life because I know you better than anyone else knows you. And my knowledge, think about this, God's knowledge of you compels God to redeem you. Who you know or who you want to know you, you can say right now that them knowing you or you knowing them other than God redeems you. Who's going to compensate for your flaws like God? Who's going to restore you from your mistakes like God? Who's going to remind you there's more to you like God? So instead of chasing spaces of affirmation, stand in the affirmation that you are known by God. And when you know that, Certain emotions fall off the table. When I know I'm known, jealousy fades into the background. When I know I'm known, envy has no seat at my table. When I know I'm known, anxiety flies out the door. When I know I'm known, I don't sit around here giving myself the blues because other people don't recognize my gifts or my identity or see who my potential is. I am known by God you beloved are known by God God knows your name can you fall in love with that knowledge I, I'm going to ask this again can you fall in love falling in love I like this because we don't say we fall up love we fall in because falling in is an act of surrender. Let me pause and, and, and do some healing work. This is why love is so precarious. Because surrender means vulnerability. And, and you can't really fall in love and be guarded. You, you can't really fall in love and be deceptive you, you can't really fall in love and be pretentious because when you're pretentious and 
deceiving is no surrender. But I'm asking you today to fall in love, surrender to the knowledge that you are known by God. Come on, let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in. Surrender to the knowledge that you are known by God. If everyone in this sanctuary right now fell in love with that knowledge, we alone could turn the world around. I'm not playing with that. Why? Because when you fall in love with the knowledge that you are known, you don't live with one of the greatest hallmarks of this cultural moment, which is, they call it F-O-M. O. Fear of missing out. When you are in love with the knowledge that you're known by God, you ain't worried about missing nothing because you got everything. So, so here's what I want you to do. It's right where you are. Just pause for a moment. Way up here. I see y'all in the balcony. I can see y'all. Don't try to fall in love because when you try to fall in love with this knowledge, you're busy trying and not falling. Surrender to this moment. It's like swimming. When you try to swim, you won't. When you just surrender to the ocean, you float. Imagine what happens when you surrender to this knowledge. You may just float above the insanity of the moment. Rise above the corruption of this time. Just let it, let that knowledge just rest on you as you rest in it. I am known by God. And because I'm known by God, God redeems. Thank you. God restores. Thank you. God upholds. Thank you. God protects. then God has expectations that I live like I'm known. Not anxious about anything, not letting worry consume me. Why? People panicking around you and here you are as still as can be, as calm as can be. And what I want you to, and I, my prayer is that when that day happens and people ask you, why are you so calm? Why aren't you worried? Why aren't you anxious? And you can tell, because I fell in love a long time ago. I fell in love with the knowledge that I've known by God. Now, I want us to sing this song again. It should be a little different now. Because when we sang it a little while ago, many of us sang it here. I need you to sing it here. Sing like you fell in love with that knowledge. Sing like you surrendered to that knowledge. Sing like you believe you are known by God. Shake loose of the symbols and the signifiers people have put upon you. You know my name. Before mama and daddy came up with their creative idea, God, you knew me. And 
And it's amazing how God actually is content with leaving things unnamed and just letting them what? Be. That's why when God said, I know your name, he didn't put a name. He just said, my. We're connected. And if you're connected to God, you're connected to everything that's connected to God. And if everything is connected to God, that means you're connected to everything. And that means when you try to separate yourself from anything, you're not walking in the fullness of your identity. Surrender. And then say, you know my name. Come on, let it hit you different now. You know my name. Come on, now just open your voice with me. Come on. Together without the praise team. You know Feel it, don't sing it. Feel it. That's it. Come on. Yeah, let it fall out of you. Let it fall out of you. You know my name. Sing it again. Come on. You know. Let it just fall out of you. Let those words fall. Come on, surrender. You don't even have to raise your voice when you know. Come on, this is your meditation and your worship. Now here's the part that should stir something. Oh, how? Come on now. You have communication. Watch this. Yeah. There's your name. Come on, I'll say it. You know? Raise it up a little bit. Yeah, I dare you to worship right now and fall in love with this. You know my name. Yeah, come on. Just feel the presence of God. Come on. You know my name. Now raise that vibration just a little bit. Oh. Yes. Watch, raise the vibration just a little bit. Come on, you know? You know my Yes. Fall in love with it. You know. Mm. You should feel like you're floating right now. Oh, God, we surrender. We surrender, God. You know? Raise that vibration now. Let the world know. Raise it. Oh, how you. Yes. And oh, how you tell me. Come on. Yes. 
Come on, oh, oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, how. Oh, it should feel different now. Oh, how. Yes. Shift this atmosphere with your love. Come on. And Come on, one more time. You know my name? Because now you know why God knows your name. Sing it. You know my name. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on to the balcony. I need you to raise that vibration. Come with me. Come on, hold on. I want to hear the balcony. Just say, this is the balcony. Oh, how? Just the balcony. I want to hear. And oh, how? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Just the balcony. Just the balcony. Come on. And I am. Come on, raise that vibration. Come on, downstairs. Just downstairs. Come on. Oh, y'all got a little bit better acoustics down here. That's what it is. Come on. Yes. Look at that sound. It even sounds different now. Come on. Now, everybody, go up another level in your vibration. Everybody, balcony bump, not praise it. Come on. Yeah, come on, make this roof shake a little bit today. Come on. Hey, come on, come on, come on. People seeing you cry, let them see you worship now. Come on, come on. You know my name. Mm. Come on, oh, raise it. Oh, how. Praise team, everybody, everybody. We're gonna do one last. You know my name. Oh, fall in love with that right now. Fall in love. Yes. Yes. You know my name. Fall in love with that idea. Come on, build that up.
Everybody say, oh, how, oh, oh how you walk with me. Oh, how you talk, oh, how you talk with me. That's your love song today. Come on. Oh, how you tell me that I am wrong. One last time. No music, no music. Oh, hi. No music. Oh, hi. best conversation partner you'll ever have. How you tell me. Oh, how you tell me. That I am your own. Now simply be still. Just, just let that, let that sit in you. Sit with, sit with that for a second. Just sit with it. Just sit with it softly. that you know our name and we are known by you knowing that we're known gives us confidence knowing that we're known gives us courage knowing that we're known oh God is a reminder that we our love by you. When you know that you're in love with God and that you, oh God, are in love with us, we don't have to chase anything. We can rest in the confidence of that knowledge and simply live and breathe breathe and live live and breathe breathe and live because we are alive in you we love you God we honor you God it's in your name we pray the name you know in your name we pray we say amen, amen, amen. Come on, give yourself a big hug today.